Main phase. Welcome to another main progress video on my channel. In this one, I'm going to be looking at some progress I've had a hand in, and the subject this time is Namco's Final Lap R, an FIA Formula 1 licensed arcade racer. The Namco sprite-based racers have for a long time been one of the weakest areas of MAME's pre-3D era Namco coverage. The games had extensive visual issues, bad audio, and overall were neither very playable nor a pleasant experience to subject yourself to, despite the majority of them having been marked as working in MAME for over 20 years. The last couple of months have seen a marked improvement across the board for these Namco racing games. While the majority of these 2D races ran on variants of Namco System 2 hardware, which was host to the original Final Lap trilogy, the final Final Lap game, the fourth in the series, Final Lap R, was developed for a custom PCB known as the Namco FL board, with FL obviously standing for Final Lap. There would be two games for this hardware, Final Lap R and Speed Racer. Final Lap R would make its arcade debut in early 1994, despite the on-screen copyright displaying 1993, presumably there were some delays over the Christmas period after the software was finished but before it went to market. By 1994, Namco had already shown 3D hardware that unlike earlier efforts was capable of putting out a fast, smooth, fully textured 3D racing game in the form of Ridge Racer a year prior, so maybe it's not surprising to see so few games on the FL board, especially not with PlayStation based hardware just around the corner, providing a relatively cheap alternate option. That doesn't however mean the FL board wasn't interesting. It was essentially a streamlined, compact, single PCB evolution of the later revisions of the Namco System 2 hardware. It has the regular C123 tilemap chip alongside the C116 palette and mixer chip, both which were present on all revisions of System 2, while taking the C355 sprite chip found on the later System 2 boards used by Suzuka 8 Hours and Lucky and Wild. The custom chip providing the rotating backgrounds, the C169, was also found on Lucky and Wild. The dedicated road layer generator, the C45, was ditched as the rotation chip was capable of handling this anyway. The sound and I.O., the newer C352, was paired with a C75 MCU, as found on the Namco MB1 hardware. The main talking point of the hardware, however, is the CPU choice. Gone are the pair of 68000s and the 6809, instead we have an Intel i960KA, clocking in at 20 MHz. This was a surprising choice, considering that even for the System 22 and Super System 22 platforms used by their 3D racers, Namco had decided to stick with a Motorola 68000 family chip for the main CPU. At no point was an i960 used by any of their 3D games. If the i960 does sound familiar, it's because it was used elsewhere. IGT, International Game Technology, one of the biggest manufacturers of casino-type games in the world, used it for their Game King platform. And no, that's not the handheld device of the same name. Maybe more famously, Sega chose an i960KB, a version with FPU on board, as the CPU that had gone to power the fairly well-known Model 2 board, home to titles such as Daytona and Sega Rally. That's really where the story of the improvements to Final Lap R begin, as while the improvements to the original Final Lap games were significant, they were made to the emulation on parts that had been phased out by this point, and were not used by Final Lap R. Final Lap R had a number of glitches, most of note the vast quantities of missing sprites. Most roadside objects were not present, nor were certain UI elements, such as the country names on the course select screen. A few observations were made, many of these missing sprites, especially the roadside ones, were stood flipped upside down in the ROM data. It was felt this might be significant, however the sprite drawing code did handle flip sprites, and for other racing games using the same sprite chip, namely Suzuka 8 Hours, all trackside objects were rendered and accounted for. With Final Lap R, the missing objects did not appear to be in the sprite list. This initially suggested that maybe there was a bug with MAME's i960 emulation, causing the list to not be populated correctly. This was not implausible, as anybody who has attempted to run a Model 2 game in MAME will tell you, there are some issues, and while most are probably not down to flaws in the i960 emulation, it's impossible to rule it out as a source of some of them, due to the low number of games using the CPU and relatively untested nature of the CPU core. It just so happened that Ryan Holtz was studying the Model 2 emulation in MAME at the time. I'd previously shown on one of my live streams some of the issues that could occur with Sega Rally, and there were known bugs with MAME's TGP Math Processor emulation affecting some Model 2 and Model 1 games, such as Motor Aid and Virtual Racing. The idea of fixing these had caught his attention. While the focus of his Model 2 work was on the TGP, it could not be ruled out that a bug in MAME's i960 emulation may have been making things worse. 
After all, the TGP only does the calculations. Ultimately, it is down to the game code to decide what to do with those results. A bug in the i960 could have easily been throwing off the game logic in something like Sega Rally. After much tracing of the final lab R code by Ryan, it became apparent that this was, somewhat unfortunately, not an i960 bug, but rather the final lap R code making lazy use of the C355 sprite table format. Final lap R's code was leaving stray bits set in one of the sprite and direction tables, thus causing the sprite entries to point to the wrong place and not be rendered. For final lap R, the valid sprite list entries were the ones with index values of 0 to hexadecimal 3ff, or in decimal a maximum of 1024 sprite entries that could be referenced. The initial fix masked the index to this, bringing into view the majority of the roadside objects in Final Lap R, with some oddly being misplaced. A quick test of other games showed that V-Shoot, a soccer game on the Namco MB1 hardware using the same sprite chip, required the index to be bumped to 2048 possible entries, a mask of 7ff hexadecimal. Further research on Final Lap R showed that any mask value of FFF hexadecimal or 4096 entries was safe, although no games appeared to require that. Any higher than that and you start to hit the stray bits that Final Lap R leaves in the upper parts of the word, causing a number of sprites to vanish once more. The value 7FF hexadecimal was settled on as it appears to be the most likely to be correct. At this point, only two fairly significant issues remain with Final Lap R's sprites the incorrect placement of some background elements, such as the cranes and certain trees, plus the missing country names on the course select screen. The badly placed sprites was an interesting one, it was again thought that maybe it could be an i960 related issue, calculating a bad position, but after Ryan looked at the i960 code, that did not seem to be the case. It was identified that the incorrect offset was coming from a sprite parameter in RAM, a delta y offset parameter that each sprite has, to which the current zoom value for that sprite is applied to get an additional screen offset for the sprite. The bad sprites, when drawn at about a quarter of their normal size, were offset by around 64 pixels. The initial fix here was to just ignore that delta y offset in the case of non-flip sprites, whereas previously it was being applied in the opposite direction than it was for the flip sprites. That did fix the in-game issues, and in testing I was unable to find any games where that logic broke, but it didn't really sit too easy with me, as the logic behind completely ignoring an explicitly specified positional offset over a flip flag seemed on shaky ground. The issue with the flags on the course select screen had not yet been solved, and while I did not connect the dots at the time, it was directly tied to this same case. Searching around for the missing sprites, I noticed while demonstrating the earlier progress on stream that they were visible, very briefly, in entirely the wrong position at the top of the screen, near the end of the animation that plays when you select a course. After a bit of experimentation, I figured out that this incorrect offset was once again coming from that delta y parameter, but for the remaining cases where we were still applying the offset. Simply ignoring the offset here too, put all the sprites on the screen, but they were still in the wrong place, and many, many other sprites were broken by that change. Looking at the sprite table in RAM, I did notice that all the missing flag sprites had a value of over 100 hexadecimal, which explained why they were being pushed so far off screen. 100 hexadecimal would be 256 pixels, and with no zooming, that's the entire height of the screen. I theorised that maybe that meant the value was signed, and the way in which the delta y value needed interpreting was different. After trying a number of different ways of interpreting the value, I found one that worked. Simple sign and magnitude. Implementing it in that way gave correct sprites on the course select screen, and also meant we no longer had to ignore the delta y value in the case of the cranes in game, as the correct interpretation of the parameter still correctly placed them. All known sprite bugs were fixed, and the code made sense. Now there is still one annoying visual issue, the bottom line of the road layer appears to be incorrect. This could be just how the game is, with that line expected to be out of the display area, or it could be a bug with the rotation layer implementation, which we do still know has issues, as both Speed Racer on this hardware and Metal Hawk on System 2 are plagued by them. For those wondering if Speed Racer has been improved by these changes, no it hasn't. As I just mentioned, the issues with that are with the rotation layer, and we still need to get to the bottom of those. Also, none of this progress resulted in Model 2 emulation improvements, as despite our earlier guesses, the bugs turned out to be specific to the Namco sprite chip implementation and not the i960 CPU. Even without progress on those other areas, bug fixes are bug fixes however, and they all help ensure that newer versions of MAME give a better experience than ever before when emulating the games where they do apply. In this case, Final Lap R looks much better and plays much better, so if you're looking to play it, you'll definitely want the upcoming MAME 0.234.
That concludes all I have to say about Final Lap R, so thank you for spending your time watching this video, and if you found it informative, please leave a like and hit subscribe, as doing so means you can be kept up to date with more main progress and the variety of live streams I also do here, some of which will give you an early preview of that progress.